เราควรจะต้องปรับตัวอย่างไรให้พร้อมกับสถานการณ์ปัจจุบันและแน่นอนนะคะการที่เราจะก้าวเข้าสู่สังคมไร้เงินสดเรื่องนี้จึงเป็นสิ่งที่เชื่อว่าหลายท่านนั้นติดตามและให้ความสนใจค่ะเราได้รับเกียรติจากคีโนต์สปีกเกอร์ในเซสชันดังกล่าวด้วยนะคะท่านเป็นอาจารย์ประจําคณะเศรษฐศาสตร์จากมหาวิทยาลัยธรรมศาสตร์รองศาสตราจารย์ดรอักษรศรีพานิชสารค่ะซึ่งอาจารย์ก็พร้อมแล้วนะคะสวัสดีค่ะอาจารย์ค่ะดิเซลหยวนได้ยินชัดเจนเลยค่ะคืออาจารย์บรรยายเลยค่ะโอเคนะเซอร์ฟอร์ seeing the importance of this topic I think the development of China's digital yuan is interesting and we can learn lessons from what Jin has done China has done China has done 3D digitalization disruption and disruption and so what China has done well, would be very interesting to learn from, and China has laid out the long-term plan to achieve these objectives. The development of digital yuan in China has been adopted by China, not only China, but China is the first to uh, successfully introduce digital. Uh, currencies uh, that can be used in real life, like uh, can be per used for purchasing uh, drinks and food. I believe that uh, in a in April or May this year, during the pandemic, that uh, surprised the whole world. Well, when there was a clip. Uh, that came out when the China Chinese Bank of China uh, showed this image. Uh, so when the whole world was realized, when the whole world realized that uh, digital yuan was already in use. Now let's go back in time. The People's Bank of China or China's uh, central bank. Uh, started uh, this effort in 2040 by setting up a special research group to study the feasibility of launching a Chinese digital currency. And China also delved deeper into blockchain uh, technology and the launch of cryptocurrencies. China did not care for cryptocurrencies or bitcoins that were invented by others. but. China study blockchain technology seriously back in 2014, and this is the timeline. So, if you are interested, and in February 2020, it formed uh, the technology company in Shenzhen. And March 2019, another company was set up in Suzhou. And lately, in April 2020, when the world world was uh, surprised to see that China has become the first country to launch the experiment of using the digital currency in Suzhou, Shenzhen, Chengdu, and Chongan, the four major cities that experiment the use of digital currency. So these countries have uh, the infrastructure uh, ready to experiment the use. For example, the payment of salaries. Uh, since then, China has never stopped developing. Uh, so in and in July this year, uh, car. Sharing platform in China, Didi Shuxing, partner with uh, the People Bank of China to experiment the use of digital currencies for paying car fares. Uh, this uh, car hailing platform uh, is the biggest in China. It may not be a household name in Thailand. And last but not least, uh, the Chinese authorities. Uh, 
received the results from the trials in four cities, and now they are expanding this pilot project to additional 28 cities and provinces. And they want, they said that this experiment should cover 400 million users of digital uh, digitals uh, up to Hebei, Tianjin, and Yangtze, and Shanghai, and southward to Guangdong or GBA, or Greater Bay Area, where Hong Kong and Macau are also located. So this is the latest development. This move by the Chinese government really reflect on the uh, vision that China has. Uh, they know what their own pain point. If they want to develop the uh, paper money, uh, they, they would not go very far. And that's why they have in place the long-term digital currency uh, development. And they also develop the digital currency electric payment, or DCEP, that is the digital yuan. So what China has done is to experiment it on a small scale and then expand it or scale it up. So whatever uh, China has done uh, with the economy reforms, they will start small and then uh, expand it further. And this is what great about the use of digital yuan. They are able to accommodate uh, 300,000 transactions in one second. So because China is a big country and they will have to test run the system to make sure that it is running smoothly and they block the technology from abroad so as to force local uh, entrepreneurs uh, to develop the technologies locally, so like you Uber, and that's why uh, local uh, car sharing platforms have been developed. Uh, and, but they learn technologies from outside. They do not adopt the blockchain technologies from abroad or cryptocurrencies that have already been invented, but they're trying to attract talents from abroad, including blockchain experts. Uh, and developed uh, digital yuan themselves since 2014. I personally have been following this development closely, and the uh, an article was published in in the Standard. I went back to the introduction of Rin Min B. Lun Min meaning people. B is the money or currency. And this is the timeline for the development of the digital yuan. Uh, China, back in uh, the era of Mao Zedong, China adopted uh, two uh, parallel currencies, one for local population and the other for foreign. Uh, or, and they also used fixed exchange rate at one time and then changed it since 1994. And it marked the uh, transformation uh, in whereby uh, the two currencies were one for local population and another for foreigners were merged into one currency until 2005 when the floating uh, currency was introduced. Why do we need to learn the timeline? Because we need to understand the steps that China has taken in order to establish uh, Chinese yuan as one of the major currencies of the world, even though they may not be successful yet. But she, Chinese yuan has already become a major currency in the basket of currencies. Uh, held by IMF uh, that was accomplished in 2015-2016. So Yuan has already been recognized as a major currency. But uh, paper currency or traditional money uh, might not be able to scale it up. Uh, 
So digitalization uh, will uh, has helped China to pursue this uh, objective. So since January 2019, uh, China uh, Chinese currency has been used uh, most widely, oh, among the most widely used. Uh, it was it's ranked uh, number nine as of March 2020 as the most widely used currency. So uh, the move to internationalize uh, IMB was, uh, is difficult because right now uh, the U.S. dollar is still the dominant currency, 40%. Taking up 40% of uh, the world currencies, whether we like it or not, uh, dollarization has uh, been the name of the game since 1971, replacing the gold standard. So that is related to the world history. So after World War II, why dollars became the dominant currency? And China, even though it emerged uh, later, despite the fact that it is one of the biggest economy, it exported the most in the world, uh, but Chinese currency ha has not managed to be internationalized. And that's why uh, China has tried very much to promote yuan as an international currency as a shortcut in order uh, to make digital yuan a, 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 an international currency. Whether this effort will be successful will need to be watched closely. Right now, it's still at an experimental stage. So that is the uh, objective that China has in mind. There has been uh, reports uh, on the 29th of August that one Chinese bank, China construction bank, has opened digital yuan to public, but, and, but it was closed uh, right after. So it's like testing the system. Even though you, digital yuan has not been used nationwide, but they seem to be running the trial on and off. You may also want to know what are the highlights of digital yuan. Are they the same as cryptocurrency or ripples? So this is another article I wrote, and you can search, do Google search. Uh, to read uh, the whole article. Digital yuan is not a cryptocurrency. Why? Because it is issued by the by China's uh, People People's Bank of China or China's Central Bank. It is a stable currency pegged one to one uh, with the uh, physical yuan. So digital yuan is like paper money, uh, but it is in a digital form. So it's not a cryptocurrency, and it, it is safe and stable, issued by the central bank of the country. And we can call it a stable currency because its value is pegged and guaranteed by the central bank. It's not like cryptocurrencies, which are issued by uh, private players. So we can call it a CB, CB, CBBC, Central Bank Digital Currency. So that's one thing. And since it is issued by the Chinese Central Bank, it, you can deposit it and earn interest. And importantly, it is the digital form of the digital money. So it will not increase the money supply in the market. So part of the money supply is in the paper or hard uh, paper form, but the other part is in digital form. That is digital yuan. 
And the reason uh, China has promote this idea is because the pain point of using paper money is dirty, it's old, and it's worn out, and it's limited in number, in terms of contact, and as a spread of diseases, and uh, printing paper money is costly, storing and collecting and of paper money, uh, including uh, disposal of this use money. That's why China want to reduce the use of paper money to address these pain points. So the digital money uh, will be stored in your digital wallet. You just download the app on your mobile uh, devices, and then you can use it for payment. So it can be used as if it's cash. So you do not have to uh, have, hold a bank account because it it already stored in your the value is it already installed in the the digital wallet. It will be a disruption to a major disruption to commercial banks. Many roles or responsibilities that commercial banks have been uh, doing uh, will be eradicated once you have digital yuan store in your own wallet and it addressed the pain point. Another pain point, we have to admit that sometimes uh, people do not have time to open a bank account to visit a bank, bank branch uh, f for account opening. So Chinese people who live in remote area uh, can have a digital wallet and then draw digital yuan for their own use, as if this money is cash. A third, uh, so I like again to emphasize that digital yuan is not a new currency. It is an existing currency that is available in a different form. And it is open regardless of the platform it is used. In China, if I don't have a Chinese digital wallet, the people who all the vendors and shops will accept my money because it is a uh, an official currency, and the system or the platform is opened, uh, uh, whereby every banks every bank will have access. And Alipay, WeChat Pay, these popular uh, applications are also a type of wallet. So if I want to make payments, I have to. I can open the wallet, whether it's Alipay or WeChat Pay. Uh, the my transaction data will be uh, available in uh, Alibaba, or FinPay, or WePay, and. I can use Alipay. Uh, I cannot use Alipay to pay uh, WeChat Pay. <coughs> that is one of the limitations that is uh, existing at the moment. So, for uh, the system that the Chinese central bank has adopted, it is an open platform allowing everybody. Uh, to use and it, and it can accommodate up to 300,000 transactions per second and there is no transfer fee and the transfer can be made 24-7. So it's quick, it's open, it is accessible, it's not limited uh, to any particular wallet uh, developers. And the fourth point which is uh, also reflecting uh, the hard work that the Chinese central bank has put in an effort is that the digital yuan can be used for payment of live payments, meaning that you don't have to have internet connection. 
because it has already developed the near field communication. So my mobile phones and the vendor's mobile phones uh, can communicate without any contact. So this system has already been developed and uh, been used to incentivize people to convert to digital yuan. Five. Uh, another unique point uh, that uh, existing mobile payments cannot do. When you use digital yuan, you use it as if you are using cash. You can pay for anything without the vendors knowing who you are. You want to buy roast chicken or sticky rice. In the f right now, you can use digital yuan without having to reveal your own identities. But if you use the mobile payment uh, wallet at the moment, let's say I'm using a, a, a bank, a mobile banking, when I use it, uh, the vendor I buy things from will know uh, who I am when I scan my QR code and they know my affiliation, which bank I have the account with. But when I use digital yuan, the vendor do not have to know my identity. My name, my bank account will not be revealed to them. So this is something very special about the use of digital yuan issued by the Chinese central bank. Number six. It is a, another reason. In fact, it may be a hidden agenda why the Chinese have pushed for the launch of digital currency because all the, the, the person or the agency that will control the data will be the People's Bank of China. The authority will be able to trace and track financial trails. Why? because it can prevent illicit transactions, to prevent corruption, to prevent tax evasion or uh, support or financial support for terrorism or other illicit activities because the central bank will be able to trace uh, where the money goes and where does it come from. So uh, in this case, the anti-money laundering agency in China might be out of a job soon as a result. So this is, on the other hand, as a user or as an owner of a of digital wallet, or somebody who's suspicious. Uh, you may be worried about uh, data privacy. If you want to transfer money to your mistress or to whoever, that the authorities would know about it. But the authorities said that if these transactions are legitimate, uh, they would not be worried about it. But if it is a gray, uh, transactions or I illegal transactions, they have the authority uh, to uh, check and investigate. So there's two sides to the coin, one way to prevent uh, criminal activities and illicit uh, transactions. But on the other hand, uh, it, it's maybe some concern about data privacy. And finally, I already touched on at the beginning why China trying to push for the launch of digital yuan, that it is expected it will serve as a shortcut for the internationalization of the Chinese currency. So it will help serve as a springboard for the whole world to use Chinese currency more. Because if the use of digital yuan is as convenient uh, a low cost, uh, people will start to convert to digital yuan. As I mentioned, this is still an, an internal experiment by China. But the expectation is that digital yuan will serve as a shortcut 
for uh, renminbi to become internationalized. Right now, China has exported the platform across the globe to because inside China, people are already prepared. Uh, they have access to uh, internet, almost 100%, 900 million people have already have access to uh, the, the internet. Uh, but China has now trying to in, uh, export the digital platform. What are the platforms that they have exported? We are now talking through Zoom. Do you know that Zoom has been developed by China, the Chinese TikTok app used across the world is developed by China and Indian. Millions, hundred millions of Indians are addicted to TikTok. This boy is crying. Why? Because the Indian government said that they want to block TikTok application. And this young man is crying, screaming, because the Indian government threatened to block TikTok. So China has exported uh, platforms and integrated platforms without anybody knowing across the world. And China has also have its own version of Netflix, TikTok, uh, Lazada, which has Alibaba behind it, uh, or AliExpress. Everybody has become uh, familiar with Chinese technology and application. So if Digital Yuan is ready for global launch, they will only partner with Alibaba and Tencent and by then, uh, which own TikTok and other startup, uh, and un uh, who, which are unicorns or global unicorns, and owned by Chinese entrepreneurs, in order to introduce digital yuan across the world, we have been using these Chinese platforms and enjoy them. So we will be offer incentives to use uh, digital yuan. I buy things from Lazada uh, a lot. Lazada may offer incentive to me that if I use digital yuan for payment, you will enjoy 50% discount. Of course, we will buy because we like the, this kind of discounts. So digital yuan will make more inroads into your lives. But maybe we thought it's only a couple of yuans, but eventually, I guarantee you that your life will be integrated seamlessly with this issue. And we, you thought that, oh, well, we are not involved with terrorism or any illicit activities. We uh, should not be aware or concerned uh, that the Chinese government would be uh, invading our piracy by trying to find out what we are using the digital UN for. So can you see this, this picture? China is taking big whether it's one belt, one road, I believe, I call it it's a, a digital silk road because all data from all of these countries, so over 71 countries participating in the Belt and Road Initiative will serve as a digital road for the launch of digital yuan at the global level. So and China also offer uh, f the use for freeze, and there may be other incentives. For example, for international transfer, we use SWIFT, which is uh, developed by Switzerland in Europe. But in, in Facebook posted this, and I think it's very interesting. And she gave an example. Let's say we are a Thai working in China and want to transfer money to our mother, five hundred dollars, uh, sorry, one thousand dollars to our family in Thailand. So we have to rely on SWIFT system. It would take five days. So it doesn't take take place immediately, and we have to pay f fee. Uh, 
uh, for $1,000 transfer, a $20 fee will have to be paid. So we'll, the, she will, um, our mom will receive only 900 80s and it took takes five days. So if the digital yuan is ready for uh, international transactions, Chinese banks said that the money can be transferred within 10 minutes and there will be no transfer fees. Do you understand what incentives that would be if Chinese yuan is going to be internationalized. There are already incentives for people uh, around the world to convert to this digital currency. Mm, that's not all. If we look at the trend, finally, <coughs> it's not easy uh, to undertake this scheme to use your own currency for international transfers. This slide is important because China is faced with limitations concerning its own regulations. China has SAFEs or China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange, which it is a monitoring body to oversee the inflow and outflow of capital accounts or financial transfer in and outside of China. Even though it can flow freely, but there will be subject to quotas. Let's say Chinese want to transfer 50 1,000 USD outside the country, it, it may be okay. But there may, if they want to transfer perhaps, uh, let's say, 50,000, let's say the limit is 50,000, they may be able to do that. But they will have to file a report with China State Administration of Foreign Exchange for approval. They will be asked of what purposes. Let's say I'm a Chinese. I'm rich and I want to transfer uh, 100,000 yuan to pay for my condominium in purchase in Thailand. I can do that, but I have to report uh, why do I want to transfer millions of yuan uh, outside the country to see if the, my request will be approved. And this is what we call capital account controls. Uh, to maintain financial stability. Otherwise, capital info outflows cannot be controlled, and it may uh, resemble what we faced during the Tom Yam Krum crisis, uh, uh, and, and the financial system might be damaged as a result. The capital account control uh, is maintained by SAFE because uh, of uh, for stability's sake. But as long as the capital con account control uh, are maintained, it would be difficult for China to internationalize this digital yuan. And of course, China is aware of this pain point. Uh, lastly, last, lately, uh, China uh, authorities are preparing to uh, relax this control. On the 1st of January this year, SAFE has already announced that it would relax foreign exchange controls. So this is what China has always done. It will, it will start more small. It, they will not adopt the chalk therapy treatment. They will start with a small experiment, a small trial, and see what are the results. For example, the relaxations of the foreign exchange control is being put on trial. There are uh, many free trade zones established in China to relax this foreign exchange control. This is another uh, development that we need to keep 
uh, close eyes on uh, so you can see that uh, China uh, is not doing things in a clear cut ways and it may they, they may take the development in a convoluted uh, manner so we need to closely monitor what's going on and I like to give credit to InfoQuest when it compare uh, digital uh, currency, electronic payment, or digital yuan uh, with Libra, whereby uh, Libra version 2 is going to be uh, launched and then compare it with Bitcoin. So you see different characteristics. I like to use this slide to conclude what are the differences. Digital Yuan is issued by China's central bank and is recognized by the Chinese government. And the issue, issuer is the central bank. Data collected by China's central bank. So any transaction uh, involving digital yuan can be traced. And uh, reference uh, picking, a uh, reference uh, system, it is not rely on blockchain technology, but China is very smart uh, drawing on talents and uniqueness of different startups. So they do not just rely solely on blockchain. And the intermediary uh, is uh, based on uh, NFC, near field communication. Uh, and of course, the currency carries uh, interest or interest bearing currency. Well, Libra and Bitcoin, uh, you can read up on the screen. So this uh, slide is helpful, and uh, I got it from Indo InfoQuest. Well, let me <coughs> sum it up. What I like to tell everyone is that digital currencies are going to be here with us, whether we like it or not. It is the direction that the world choose to go towards. So we have to make preparations. Uh, we as uh, consumers have to be ready, and uh, Thai government and Thai security agencies have to be uh, prepare uh, because cyber attacks or hacking um, remain a, a serious threat. And we will have a digital lifestyle in the future. And China is not the only country trying to develop digital currencies. Ecuador, China, Senegal, Singapore, and Tunisia are now running trials with their own digital uh, currencies. But these countries are small in size. But China has already aimed high. They wanted uh, 400 million people of their citizens using digital currencies. And 2022, uh, 2022 uh, so two years from now, China will also be hosting Winter Olympics, and that's where uh, Digital Yuan will also be uh, scaled up. And other currencies are being developed by Estonia, Japan, Palestine, Russia, and Sweden. <coughs> so we have to um, be ready. In fact, I have other examples from Vietnam, uh, but I don't think I have time for it. Uh, but we have to uh, disrupt ourselves, and and uh, we cannot uh, be victims of the boiling frog uh, syndrome. And if we do not adjust, we will not survive. Thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Sonsi.
we have to disrupt ourselves, otherwise we will not be able to survive. And that's the story of Digital Yuan that will play an increasing role, supported by the Chinese government, and will sure be used more widely across the border. We'll have a short break, and then we will then look at a case study from New Zealand and its uh, educational sector.